HCL is produced. Let's just go over how it is regulated. How is it increased? How is it reduced? What causes that? So, as we said, in the pyloric gland, We have the G cells and the D cells that produce gastrin and somatostatin. These have to go through the blood system in order for them to have an effect on the target cell. And for them to have an effect, the target cells have to have receptors in which they can bind. And we have our parietal cell right there and we have our enterochromatin like cell that produces histamine right there and these are found in the oxyntic gland. We also have the stomach warping innervated by the parasympathetic vagus fiber that releases SCH. Now, SCH binds to mascarinic receptors that are found on both the ECL and also on the parietal. Now, aside the M receptors, parietal has uh, H2 receptors where histamine can bind. They also have the G receptors where gastrin can bind and D receptors where stomatostatin can bind. Uh, ECL cells have G, D, and M receptors. Okay, so let's see the most direct influence on the parietals that can occur. We have ECL releasing histamine that can bind to the H2 receptor. It has a stimulatory effect and therefore uh, through a cascade of activities within or reactions within the cytosol of the parietal cell, we have an increase of HCL release. Uh, the next direct uh, effect is noted by release of gastrin into the bloodstream and release of somatostatin. Before we talk about somatostatin, we'll talk about gastrin. Now, gastrin can directly bind to our parietal cell and it will augment the release of HCL. It can also indirectly augment this by binding to HCL where it will increase the release of histamine that will also increase the stimulating effect on the parietal cell. Um, aside that, it's SCH can bind directly on the parietal cell, the M receptors and augment release, and it can also bind to the M receptors of the ECL and augment release of histamine, which would then stimulate the parietal cell to increase the secretion of HCL. How about uh, the T cells? When they release the stomatostatin into uh, stomatostatin into the bloodstream, this can bind to the T cells that are found on the ECL. They inhibit the release of histamine, and reduced histamine means reduced stimulation on the parietal cell, and therefore reduced HCL release. Or they can directly bind to the parietal cell and directly inhibit the release of um, HCL. The other route or route that they can take is directly binding to the G cells, reducing the gastrin uh, secretion, and if gastrin is reduced in secretion, therefore it won't have a stimulatory effect either on the ECL or on the parietal cell themselves. So just to summarize what we have done, number one, ECL releases histamine and histamine has a stimulatory effect on PC. Number two, uh, the vagus releases SCH, which also has a stimulatory effect on the PC. Number three, the G cells, they release gastrin, which goes through blood first, and then to PC, which still has a positive effect there. And then the ECL itself, uh, gastrin, G 
T cells can release gastrin that can bind to ECL, which release histamine. And this has a positive effect on the PC. Okay, um, the vagus can also release SEH on ECL that will release more histamine and will have a positive effect on the PC. Then we have the D cell that releases somatostatin that can go to the G cells, the ECL, or directly to the parietal cell and it all these it inhibits. Um, so that concludes our regular.